Happy Friday, everybody. I'm glad y'all love jamming out to the theme song, honey. And I'm here for it. Thank you guys for joining me. I got my co-host with me tonight, who is Emily. What up, Emily? <laughs> hey, everyone. I saw uh, someone wrote in the comment. They asked if someone's dick got leaked again. <laughs> they said if somebody did what? They said, oh, Emily's here. Did someone's dick get leaked again? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's the only time we podcast is when somebody goes viral for for leaking their peen pics um child there was definitely a lot of nudity frontal nudity this season on euphoria hell even the first season it was a lot um but i'm just we we have so much to catch up on and talk about this show was definitely definitely a trip the second season to me i really loved the first I think the second season was good, episodes one through about six. Seven and eight just totally lost me. Yeah, I the I liked episodes seven and eight, but they weren't my favorite, I guess. It it was really confusing the way that um with the play. Like mm-hmm. you didn't know what actually was going on, what was real the way I guess they kept going from reality to the play and I didn't know which one was which, but I still thought it was a good season, but I, they weren't my favorite episodes. Yeah, it was a lot going on. And I'll say episode seven for me, when they started the whole play thing for me personally, I wasn't really feeling it. Like I get it. That's Lexi's thing. She wants to be a playwright and all this stuff, but I kind of didn't like the way how everybody makes it seem like Lexi's so innocent. And me and you had this conversation. And I just feel like people give Lexi like way too much credit. I think that whole play was a slap in the face. Yeah, well, I thought the play was messy as hell. Like, I guess I really do like Lexi's character. Um, She's super relatable. I guess maybe that's one of the reasons that I like her for me. But I think the play was really messy. And for her to assume that people wouldn't be mad, she's putting everybody's business out there and they didn't really know. So Mm -hmm. for her to like how she was kind of like interrogating Fez, like, oh, do you think they're going to be mad? Do you think they're not? If you got to ask somebody that many times, if you think someone's going to be mad, then you're probably doing something that's kind of messy. Had she just owned it and been like, look, I'm doing this for myself. This is my thing. This is how I'm expressing myself. Whatever it is, what it is. But for her to kind of act like she was so innocent and wasn't trying to hurt anyone, which I do think is the case. But I mean, let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. It was messy. It was so messy. It was. And especially the way she was doing her sister. Like, we all know Cassie, child. Cry baby Cassie. We know she got on our nerves. We know she was wrong for what she did with Nate. But it was like a lot of gaslighting, underhanded, I'm going to throw a rock and hide my hands. That's the vibe I get from Lexi. And I was not here for it. Because I'm like, if you're going to do that, then you need to own it. I was tired of the white girl tears. Uh, yeah. I didn't know. And oh, my God. And everybody's mad That's at like me. like her sister. And- Right. That's the kindest damn family I've ever seen in my life. They are quick to cry. But (laughs) I like, and like I said, I do like Lexi, but she was being Mm -hmm. like the whole carousel thing. Like, why she got to do her sister like that with the girl riding the carousel? Oh, I love fucking, you know, like just the way she represented her sister was shitty. Like at the end of the day, that's still your sister. Yeah. And it came off with a lot of like jealous undertones. And another thing, like I was saying when we was talking all in Telegraph, now, if I want to act like, oh, Lexi's so innocent because she ain't out there fucking everything that moves. But let's keep it real. Who's her biggest crush? Fesco, a drug dealing thug. You know what I'm saying? A hood booger. Why ain't Lexi dating that dude that's in the acting program with her? The one that was messing with the big girl that got dumped? I think that would have been a perfect match for Lexi. She wasn't yes. checking for him. She wanted that bad boy peen. Yeah, yeah. Which Okay, so according to him, <laughs> you're right, you're right. According to the show, I get the reason that she liked Fez because she is shy. And usually if you're more of like a shy girl, 
usually the you're going to, I guess, be more attracted to someone who is more confident and will approach you that you don't have to approach. And she liked the fact that he asked her so many, he seemed genuinely interested in her and asked her a bunch of what Ruse asked her so many questions about herself. So I, I, I'm here for the relationship. I like it. I like what they, what they call it. Fexy. Is that it? Yeah. That's what they call it on uh, Reddit and stuff. Fexy. Yeah. yeah I'm because people wanted it. them to be together. Yeah. I thought, you know, I, and I thought they were a cute couple and she bought another side out of uh, Fesco and he bought a side out of her. But I just hate the fact that her fans try to act like she's so much innocent and she's above reproach. If you say anything about her, oh, you're just mean. The other characters are way more effed up. And it's like all of these kids no. have issues. None of them are innocent. Yeah, yeah. The 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 crying can go because I think we get enough of that from Cassie. But I mean, they are sisters, so they're going to have similar traits. I mean usually you're going to have the similarities as you are with like your family. Cause you kind of grew up the same usually. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, no, Lexi's no angel. Like, I don't feel like that's cool for them to say that you can't say anything about her, but I think what it is, is she's just a very relatable character and maybe, I don't know. They see like the way that Cassie is toward her. Cause one thing I didn't like Cassie had the right to be upset about the play, but for her to get up on stage, like Cassie, it's always been about you. It's always Mm -hmm. about you. And right now it's your sister's play and it's about her. And you somehow got to take your ass up there and make it about you. Now, granted, Lexi made a lot of the play about her. So I get it. Like I kind of get both sides, but it's like, damn, Cassie, you can't just have a seat and sit down for one minute without making shit about you. Exactly. I I personally think that the whole play situation should have been done in one episode. Like it shouldn't have been any cutaways. They should have just did this weird, strange play in one episode. Cause it's like, how many times are we going to hear Rue's father's, you know, eulogy? And why do you have it memorized? Like, that's weird. <laughs> Nobody yeah. else found that strange that she had the, the eulogy memorized. And, like, literally it went on for episode seven, episode eight. And it's just like, okay, we're back here at the funeral again. And I was over it at that point. And then another thing, I just felt like they should have focused on that and then either made a whole nother season, not season, a whole nother episode. Like, let's say they did an episode nine that should have just focused on the whole Nate Jacobs and Fesco situation. I feel like they really rushed season eight, the last episode, because I was just kind of left really disappointed. Like, what the hell did I just watch? Because everything else was good kind of leading up to that. And, you know, and then Elliot, bless his heart. He, you know, the cute little Filipino boy. Yeah. (laughs) Shout out. That long ass ukulele song that he that was long. <laughs> that was a really long song. <laughs> What's the last for this? I said y'all got him playing a damn ukulele and singing. Where's Lori, the one that was supposedly supposed to put you know ruin to sexual slavery? Like it was all these people, all these characters that we had in season two. And they just disappear. There's just like no more backstory. We don't know whatever happened to them. Was there somebody in the closet? Like, how do you just leave us hanging? But yet we get this rendition of, you know what I'm saying? Elliot's song. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a little underwhelming. And I, I I, hate when, and I know a lot of seasons do it. I know Game of Thrones did it, but I don't know. I, I hate when the seasons lead or end on cliffhangers, especially since it's going to be like, what, two more years since we get season three. But I just, I don't like when they do that. I feel like it's kind of just like a cheap way to end things and get people excited for the next season. I would have liked to have had a little bit more. I agree. It definitely felt rushed. Um, but yeah, it's like, are, are we could just completely forgetting about like the, the drug dealer that's owed 10 grand that is clearly like right. all that life. That's not a thing. Nobody's worried about that. Like that just, oh, well, it got flushed. No big deal. Like what, what the fuck? Where is she? Right. And where, like, what really happened to the suitcase worth of drugs? I refuse to believe that they flushed that many drugs down the, you know, the toilet and it didn't just mess up their entire plumbing system. Right. Exactly. That would, no way. (laughs) That, because there was fentanyl patches. There was all kind of shit that you just can't just flush for one. But it, Another thing, like you said, it would have messed the plumbing up. I mean, there's a lot of holes in the story. And I just can't believe that her mom would be so naive to think that this is her personal stash. Like, there's got to be more to the story than that. But 
I guess we'll see in season three, but I, I would have liked a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next decade. Right. Yeah, they should. I just felt like it was it needed to be more written well. Now, somebody wrote this in the chat. Uh, Dugana says Lexi and Cassie are passive aggressive in different ways. They are both jealous of each other for different reasons. Lexi wants to live vicariously through Cassie, but she's insecure about herself. Cassie wants the attention that her mother gives Lexi, but their personalities crash. I think that's yeah. a really good point. I do too. And you know, I, I really do like their mom though. Their mom is a trip. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's an alcoholic, but she's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, she's, she's funny. Yeah. I like how she held uh, Cassie accountable when she was like, yeah, I don't think that's an airtight argument. <laughs> don't fuck your best friend's boyfriend. Um, but yeah, no, that, that is definitely true. Just like um, you and I had talked about when uh, Lexi didn't get the titties or whatever. And she's like, well, I don't want to be known for my body. Yes, you did. You right. did, but you didn't get it. So now you're going with a different approach, which is fine. But yeah, I definitely agree. Passive aggressive for sure. Yeah, definitely. And then another thing I wanted to touch on that went on, you know, in that last episode was the whole Nate Jacobs thing. Like oh. that kind of bothered me, you know, because I'm like, I thought he was like on some murder suicide thing. He had the gun. He had the beer. It was all dramatically shot and shit. So I'm thinking he's about to go drive himself off of a cliff then he shows up at this warehouse and his daddy, Cal, is there with like all types of weirdo, you know, whatever they got going on, honey. Some type of, you know, probably an orgy or something was getting ready to take place. But Nate walks in there. I, I don't know if you guys got this vibe, but I've told you I've been feeling this for a while. I get a vibe that Nate was possibly molested by his father. I just get molestation vibes. Yeah, I did too. It's their their relationship is really weird and he's so overly angry at Nate and Nate has a lot of hatred towards him, even though he tries to go out his way to have his dad's back. But I've always felt like maybe him watching that porn at such a young age. I know that Cal found out that Nate was going in his stash. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey T Sippers, to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.